the Pulse of the Hawkesbury. Pulse 89.9. And here we are on Pulse FM and I have Nathan Sabrognio on the line. Look, Nathan, I wanted to talk to you this morning and thanks for jumping on early. The Wilcox property has been on everyone's mind and we know that Council did go to vote for it. And I've seen your post on Facebook. Um, the Wilcox must be absolutely relieved. Look, uh, I'm sure they are and this isn't a a complete salvation of the house. It's no. a reprieve. Yes. It's a reprieve so that the route can be re-examined. Yes. And I'm glad that uh, a majority of my colleagues were prepared to agree mm. that that was a good thing. Mm. It, it, was it a uh, long discussion over that with um, the pros and cons of it or was it a rather quick sort of decision, that one? Look, m maybe it would be better to just walk through the history of this. Yeah, go for it. When... When the Red Bank development uh, was approved many years ago, around 2012, the sweetener that the developers offered at that time was a bridge over the Gross River as a piece of uh, public infrastructure that would uh, make it worthwhile, uh, make it a net positive. The, the location that was chosen by, by mutual consent with, with council and transport for New South Wales uh, had that bridge going over at uh, Navoo Reserve. Yeah. When when the council that I was elected to in 2016 came to the chamber, they, in their wisdom, decided that Navoo Reserve was not the right location for that bridge, mm. so that so that all of the work that had been done uh, to try and plan for a bridge at that location was crammed in the bin, mm. and then the process was started over, and a new route was selected, and unfortunately the route uh, went through the, the Wilcox home. Mm. Uh, that wasn't that wasn't known at the time. That was just something that was um, worked out afterwards. A yeah. And, and the, I, might, I might add that route, the detailed route that went through the Wilcox home was chosen mm. by the developers. It wasn't chosen by council and then it was presented back to us for ratification. And that brings us to last night. Right. You see that the long, torturous process mm. to get this new voluntary planning agreement, a VPA, okay. to to confirm that this is where the bridge would go and this is where the road would go, mm. um, was subject to a process of public exhibition. Mm. And when that uh, exhibition process uh, came back to us last night, it was abundantly clear that there had been hundreds, over 300 submissions, mm. uh, and two-thirds of them uh, were, were very strident in saying, you, you know, you shouldn't put somebody's house at risk, especially when as people would know, um, there was vacant land on yeah. either side and a small adjustment to the route would allow, a, a, I hope, a, a road that was compliant with the relevant standards to just go around the house yeah. and still meet all of the other goals in terms of yeah. giving us a flood-free uh, flood access and, and so forth. Yeah. And uh, what I defended last night was the right uh, of our chamber to amend um uh, a faulty VPA uh, mm. at this juncture when it comes back from public consultation. Mm. Now, there were some of my colleagues that um, that differed in their opinion and they can defend their position uh, themselves. I won't do that for them. Yep. Uh, and I'm, I'm just glad uh, that uh, there were seven out of the 12 councillors who were prepared to give the Wilcoxes a reprieve yeah. and to uh, have council and the other parties sit back down and work out if there isn't something we can do. And the reason that this was so contentious was that it, it became apparent that the, the Wilcox house had to be sacrificed because there was another property that represented flat, vacant, you know, um, yeah. land yeah. next door yeah. that had been uh, quarantined uh, yes. from consideration. Yes. And what I've resolved, what I put to my colleagues last night specifically says, let's have another look at the route and let's look at all the potential routes and yeah. not give anybody grace or favour by excluding them from consideration because there's, it's just common sense to run a road through uh, a vacant land mm. uh, rather than through somebody's home. Mm. And, and that's not simply because of the ethical duty that we had to do the right thing by the Wilcox family. Mm. It, it's a pragmatic decision because I rather suspect that the um, cost of compensating the Wilcoxes for the loss of their home mm. uh, would be greater than the cost of reanalyzing this and going through the vacant land next door, not to mention the costs 
of having this litigated because I think we would be on very oh yes um, shaky ground, a- yes. and this could easily be tied up in the land and environment court for another couple of years. Yeah. So hopefully, this is the best decision all round. Yeah, uh, we actually followed that with uh, the Wilcox. We had them in here and we discussed it, and she 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 showed me the documents uh, that said that it was not to go through that property was to be left alone. The cleared one you're speaking of. Mm. Uh, so that and that was just so blatantly obvious, and I think you're correct in what you're saying that it could have opened up a litigation if it had gone through because it's in black and white. It's there, and I mean, yeah. you know, we're, we're community radio, and so is all the other stations in the area. But there's um, commercial stations that have seen this paperwork, and you can imagine how they would jump on it like anything. But oh, look, they, they, they were on a current affair. Yep. They came to, to national attention. Yep. And really a lot of the credit for this outcome, I think, um, goes to your listeners uh, mm. and to members of the community mm. who responded and, and, mm. and rose to the occasion and said, well, we don't think this is a terribly good idea either. Mm. Yeah. And um, when you talk about the developers, are we talking about Red Bank? Yes. Yeah, okay, because I had Red Bank on uh, Pulse as well and uh, they were saying that they had to pick uh, a route and that's what they picked and uh, I think now I can't remember who it was, it might not have been the developers, but someone else mentioned the fact that if it didn't go ahead, they would give the money that they were going to put into this, I think, to the state government in the roads to work it out and they would step back. Is that correct, Nathan? Look. Look, okay then, Philip, the, the agreement to build the bridge and the approach roads is a tripartite agreement between yeah. the developers, council and the New South Wales government. And yeah. and I also have to emphasise in, in every public interview that I give that I'm only giving my own point of view here. I'm yes. not seeking to represent council no. or council's official position. Mm. Um, but with that said, um, uh, my sincere hope is that the developers will not walk away mm. from this. It is true that the developers have asked us for countless delay after delay. They've asked for the changing of milestones. Mm. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a mockery of the position um, that was put to the community at the mm. beginning of this process. That bridge should have been open by now. Yes. Based on the number of lots sold in the Red Bank estate, under the original agreement, this bridge would have been built by now and people would have been driving on it. Yeah. And here it is, and there hasn't been a single shovel in the ground. Yeah. Now, to be scrupulously fair to all the parties, including yes. the developers, yep. and it's easy to bash developers, mm. uh, is that you know a lot of the blame sits with council mm. for dragging their feet, for changing their mind about where the bridge was going to be, mm. and the developers have consistently said uh, at every opportunity that they, they want to see this bridge built, and that claim that they put forward some years ago now, uh, that, you know, that they wanted to just pay the money and walk away, mm. I think was born of a sense of frustration mm. that council couldn't get attacked mm. together. Mm. But they've hung in there, and mm. what we're asking for in this circumstance is uh, another brief delay mm. to look at a portion of the route, mm. not the whole thing, we're not relocating the whole bridge. The no. bridge will still be in the same place. Most of the approach roads will be in precisely the same place it will meet. Springwood Road at the same point, it will meet Grossville Road at the same point. Yeah. We're just seeking a different pattern of property acquisition yeah. so we can spare somebody's home. Yeah, I think that when I was talking to uh, Robin Preston, she said that the curve of the road goes over the Wilcox family home and that's why it had to be um, surrendered, taken, whatever you do, and uh, that the curve couldn't go the other way. But she never told me why, so... I think that's sort well, of what you're talking about, Nathan, is the fact that maybe well, curving it the other way. Well, look, uh, the, the, the crux of my argument mm. was that uh, a compliant road couldn't be um, threaded through because the, the people who drew up those plans had their hands tied. Mm. They had their hands tied by not being able to contemplate the partial acquisition of a sliver of land mm. at the edge of an adjacent property mm. because there had been this secret meeting mm. uh, that took that t- land off the table mm. and uh, neither the councillors nor the general public were told about this secret deal mm. and that it only came to light through a GIPA application that mm. the Wilcoxes made to try and get to the bottom of this. Mm. Well, I'm pleased they did. 
and I'm pleased that you stood up and did what you did and I think the Wilcox will I could I could not imagine what it would be like for them to be honest it's I think you'd have to be in their position to know the stress that they're going through over this and the yeah even though it's and just a reprieve and we don't know what's going to happen it is a reprieve and how long would that reprieve be for do you think Nathan well, look, it, the, the, the motion that I put, uh, or the amendment that I put, and mm. we were able to pass last night, said that um, there would be uh, now uh, an ongoing re-examination, negotiation, and that the matter would be further reported back to council. Mm -hmm. It is my hope that there would be a recognition that this isn't a huge change. The bulk of the VPA mm. um, remains the same. This mm. is a small change to one part, and it shouldn't take forever to map out a new route, to have a new consultant draw up an engineering feasibility uh, and costing document uh, in a timely way mm. and um, that that can be reported back to council, not years from now, mm. uh, but, but soon, mm. uh, and that the Part 5 application can be put to the state government or put to council, rather, mm. for ratification sooner rather than later. Mm. Um, and... What pleases me, it's a peculiar feature of the way the debate went last night, is that there were a number of councillors who, if I can put it this way, broke ranks mm. to vote with their conscience. Uh, I'm grateful to uh, fellow Liberal councillors. Uh, I'm grateful to uh, a Labor councillor uh, and a bunch of independents mm. who collectively uh, got us over the line. And if they were voting with their conscience and not along a party line, they have my thanks. Yes, Yes, I think they have to thanks for everyone because I, one of the things I do believe that's been most mentioned a lot uh, around the community is the fact that the council is more uh, political than it is for the actual people and this shows now, as what you said, that they have actually put the politics aside and looked at what is actually, you know, the correct thing to do for the people. No, look, that, that's fine and if you'll permit an ad... Uh, for locals who are interested in these issues and, and want to stay on top of developments, I'm very active on social media and mm. I'd invite your listeners to just type into Facebook, Councillor Nathan Zampronio. Mm. They can follow me. I'm, I'm very active in this space and if they care about local issues, I'm always providing updates of one sort or another, just like I have a, a mailing list and a YouTube channel. And, you know, m my, my name's pretty easy to find because it's such an unusual name. So they should just go and try and find me online that. and follow me. You got that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, look, I, I saw your video and I thought it was great. We've put it up on our um, Facebook page and we'll later shift it over to the website as well, if that's all right with you. Um, because no, that's, that, that's, that, that's fine. Last night's council meeting went to 1 a.m. Yes. And I thought it was important to get something out yep. as quickly as possible because the community were so interested. Yeah. Do, when did the Wilcox get to know the outcome? Oh, well, they were there at the meeting last uh, night. Oh, right. Okay. Geez, it would have been nerve-wracking for them. Mm. Yeah. Um, is, there, is it a secret ballot of who actually voted or is it something that could be known? No, it was an open, it was an yeah. open portion of the meeting. Um, council meetings do have a confidential portion, but this yep. was not in the confidential session. It was in an open session. And, in fact, the video that you've uh, shared to the Pulse FM mm. um, page today uh, lists who voted which way. Okay, fine. So if people want to know, they can get on and listen to that video and um, then they'll see exactly who voted where and the reasons for and against, I suppose. Yes. Yep. Okay, that's excellent. Look, we'll stay with you if you're okay on this Wilcox um, journey because we'd love to know what the outcome is. As I said, we've been on the journey with them. Um, we've had them in here. We've had Red Bank and it'd be really nice to know what outcome comes. Yeah, uh, and, and I'll just say that, you know, in terms of some of the councillors, some, not all, but some of the councillors who voted to demolish the Wilcox home had never availed themselves of an opportunity to go out and meet with the Wilcoxes mm -hmm. at their home, and sit across their kitchen table and eyeball not only the family, uh, but the, the situation of their house on the land and the vacant land next door, mm -hmm. and I find that disappointing. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that because it's a huge... Um it's a huge issue that has uh, got very big in the Hawkesbury and I it's I think everyone needs to put a little bit of time into that to at least have the empathy for the people that could lose their home. So I mm. agree with you totally on that. I think you wouldn't find anyone in the Hawkesbury that really wouldn't agree with you on that one, Nathan. Look, um, mm. I appreciate you chatting with me this morning. You must be absolutely tired from... 
that long haul last night. Um, yes, yeah, actually, I'm as, I'm, as, I'm as sick as a dog. I'm getting over a heavy cold and you'll find me at the doctor's later today. <laughs> okay, then. Well, um, I hope you get better. And uh, as I said, we'd like to keep in touch with you over what develops through this Wilcox issue. Well, good to talk with you, Catherine. Always a pleasure. Okay, thanks a lot, Nathan. Bye-bye. Bye. The Pulse of the Hawkesbury. Pulse 89.9.